hired for hairdressers, the technical. And we've brought the best expert in the world, Mr. Takashi Kitamura. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. A gorgeous model, Zoe. He's going to be an amazing example of what can be done on our manhandling adventure. Uh, what's the sort of strategy, Takashi? So I'd like to start with uh, some color on it. So I'd like to put just a few highlights on the front to get a nice dimension, nice and simple. The tools we're going to be using today is Paul Mitchell's dual purpose bleach with 20 volume, a little bit of foil, and again, the philosophy of Takashi I think is magical less is more. It's not about 150 foils, it's about an upgrade or a bridge. Now the section size, I mean, is that dictated by anything? Uh, just uh, not too deep for me, because if you get too much color on it, you get more loot to it. So I like to, I don't want to get too much loot on it after okay. a while. I don't think it's as a man. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. And the one thing that we know is smart. Uh, professionals in the salon every day is one of the ways we make the biggest impact on our business is by upgrading. Seeing every opportunity on a haircut booking to see what else you can go to the next level on. So the one thing that we really do in the salon every single day is look for all these possibilities of upgrades, not just because we make more money, there's another scientific reason. We found that the more services a customer enjoys in our salon, the more likelihood they'll return. So by getting them into multiple services, different people in the salon, you're actually creating a much better loyalty with your everyday customers. As far as pricing for this, Takashi, obviously it's quite simple to kind of work through. Uh, what would you charge in a salon for something like this? Uh, probably start from like 45 up. Well, that's pretty profitable. $45 for three foils. That's pretty amazing. We know where to put it, right? That's it. It's not knowing kind of color, it's knowing where it goes, and that's the one thing that defines us as professionals. So here we are, we're on the last foil. So it's a three foil highlight, so it's quite easy to imagine that you can actually upgrade any haircut situation into a few highlights in the right manner. Um, the choice here for the dual purpose bleach was quite simple. Just simply we want a very summery look. I think that's a great way to explain it to guys. It's kind of look like they spent the summer in Hawaii. So it's really not about getting an unnatural look. Even though we chose to burnish it more with the bleach over a color, we like this kind of look and it'll work beautifully with his kind of dirty blonde hair that he's got naturally. It couldn't be simpler. Three foils specifically placed, and especially as we get into the haircut technique, this will really kind of come alive. So there it is. Simple Business 101. So here we have Zoe back, and you may remember three foils. That's all it took to catch. You give a little comb through because I think the results are outstanding here. So put three foils in it. And who would imagine for such little work what a big difference you'd see? So I just love that sort of feeling in it. Technique-wise, you're going to go somewhere in the haircut. Give us a little download of what you're going to do in the technique. So on the side area, I like to use uh, one of my techniques, shocking techniques, so I can create like in and out kind of messy kind of texture kind of feel to it. And on the top area, I like to use a point cut technique, which is I use it, use it a lot on the men's hair. So I can create same kind of texture, but on the top, I can get it a little bit easier to get on it to get a point cut. So the choice in techniques is one that's a stroking that's going to give you a sort of stonewashed edge is what we talk about in our culture. And then a point cut to really create the interior design that's all that PT texture that we love so much. Sound like a plan? Yes. Let's get to it. So I'm super section from the decision line to the center back, kind of downhill line to it, and then from the back center to the decision line. So slightly kind of downhill to it, to the back. And I'm taking diagonal section all the way back of the head, just like that. And comb through, start from the front hairline, taking slightly forward di uh, over direction to it using a shocking technique. So each time I cut into it, I put some holes in it, and I check my hair cut. And if I'm happy with it, take the same section over the previous section, and then same thing again. So it has a slight forward drag to it, yeah? Just very really slight. Subtle. Very subtle. So that way I can make front ends a little bit smaller, back end a little longer. Now this pattern that you've chosen to cash, is it a common sort of pattern you use on men's uh, grooming? Yes, I do. Because uh, I can connect from the top to the bottom, front to the side, all runny. 
So as you walk through here, the one sort of key factor is the hair is staying kind of stationary in your fingertips. And if you really look at your scissor action, you're kind of releasing right on top of your fingers. Explain that. Because uh, if I keep that my finger everything straight, it's really, really hard to cut it. My, my finger is going to be on my wrist. I have to kind of release my finger. Kind of like, almost like a laser cut. And dropping down in the nape, is it the same process all the way through? Yes, I'm going to keep it kind of longer in the uh, nape area, so I'm lifting a little bit higher than anywhere else. It's almost back section, still the same matter, kind of over that slightly forward to it, and it is my finger kind to it. Now where's the stopping point on this side? Just one pass the back center section, so I can get a nice connection both ends. My nape area just kind of through it. So this is my last section back area. So as you can see, it, I mean, over there it's back to it a little bit. So that's going to become a kind of melting point from the same technique on the opposite side. So it really does save you kind of knowing that you've covered both sides well. It should be a great balancing point. Exactly. If you as a guy, I don't want to get big corner in the back or the center of the head. So if I think both ways, I get a little more lambda kind of feel to it. And as you can see the uh, shape of it slightly shown as long, a little bit longer in the back. And side two, same section. Or by the core a little bit. And in this case, I'm going to cutting from the bottom to the top. So that way, I can cut it a little easier that way. It's really good on this side. You can see the forward drag just very so slight. And that's just going to encourage that hair to move around a little differently and not be stuck in one position. Kind of faster scissor goes. What would be the advice for a young hairdresser watching this to kind of get that type of speed to catch? You just don't be afraid. And then. Once you get used to it, speed comes to you, and then just don't be afraid. I say so. You can really see those edges coming off in a very much different mechanism from the normal way that we would wield a pair of scissors. So I think it's kind of exciting the immediate result that you're seeing on top of it. Um, I notice you're using a loose tooth comb. What's your sort of thought process there? I'm cutting texture anyway, so really, really got the comb. So it doesn't really matter to me. So loose comb is kind of nice kind of tension to it and then easy to come through for me too. So the looser comb automatically gives you a looser sort of texture to it. So sometimes switching the tools can really give you these results more than the blueprint of the section or the manner in which you do it. As you can see it, try to bring myself straight into to the head so I can create same texture both sides. So we're in that top, sort of coming up to the very last part here on the back end here. Uh, we're about one section away from the middle. And really what we're trying to get here is a real melting point from both sides that we come in from the diagonals on. Exactly. So this is going to be my last section of the side two. So it only comes off a little bit, just connecting to it. Now the one thing to catch, we travel around the world, every season is cut with these type, particular techniques. Um, when we say hair can be messy, we're not saying it's just a complete uh, monstrosity. There's some very big organizations, and you're still going to see connecting points like this, cross-checks. We're still looking for balance. We're not making excuses as bad hairdressers that we like uneven hair. Uh, it still has the form of geometry, wouldn't you agree? Yes. So it still has a nice manner to it to cut. So you can see the balance of it still has a nice line to it. It's just not messy. It just Messy, I think, so. So now I like to connect the top to the side. So taking a diagonal section of forward, front. Now the diagonal makes a lot of sense here, so you're kind of getting a good girth from the top end all the way into what's already been previously cut. Uh, you're really just connecting all the way through here. The flow area to the bottom area I like to connect. And over the back a little bit, in this case, so I can protect the front here. 
something, especially on man, it is really a lot, a lot about protecting that front line. At least if it gets dry and you can maybe create things that really matter on it. So it's good to kind of keep it for later, if you will, especially if you're working on some of the damp to dry textures. Um, it really, it's not something you should cut first. Uh, I have recession lines. Once you cut them a little short, they disappear into little holes. My wife calls them driveways. So not a good idea. Protect that front all the time. And almost like you connect the same way, and then from the bottom to the top, all the way to the end. And then once I start the center section, this is going to be my last section. And this last uh, side too, same model. Drop the section. I like to back to a little bit, because it's like... Great visual on this side, or look at that. That's my guide, and that's a call. So I'm going to connect that. So the scissor moving to catch, because on camera, it almost looks like you're just plucking it out, but there's actually a little bit of innuendo on those blades. Could you explain what we're seeing? Okay, so uh, when I take a section, when I cut into it, I'll open my blade, and then go into the pair. So when I cut, I shut completely. So each time I cut, I put some kind of little triangle into the hair almost. Kind of get more sort of tethered, if you will. Again, keeping away from those clumpy ends that we're sort of uh, really trying to steer away from because they're just going to create more work on the dry work. You've got to soften every single one of them. So time management is critical as a modern day hairdresser. So I love it, and it's almost too fast to see that opening and closing, but that's really what's sort of chewing off those edges. Uh, and I think it really, Takashi, with your scissors, you've almost created a, a scissor identity in the hair with much more sort of disciplined structure than perhaps a scissor lends itself to. Yes. This is my last section from the back end. And I just connect. I took that section that way and that way. So I can swim both ways. And it's a little close check-in. It should have a nice head shape feel. Uh, not only the master of the stroking technique, but here he is as a point cutter, and I just love uh, the diversity you've created in point cutting. Point cutting is now a necessary skill if you're serious about doing men's hair. Uh, give it a little break then to catch your point cutting. Sure. So I'm going to put in the far end. And if when I do the point cut, if I bring my scissors sideways, I can take off the length, which is I'm doing right now. And then if I take my scissors straight in, it's going to give me a little more space into the hair. Now the sections you've chosen is really just connecting from side to side exactly. from the last technique. There should be a little point in the middle if you've done it correctly. Yes. I should have a big corner on the top of the head. So I just want to take the corner off with the point cut. So your one-on-one -on -one version is first of all sort of roughing in the length by using point cut with a slight angle to take the tips off. Yeah, right. almost like uh, matching that shocking taking the ball on it, create the same kind of texture, not too deep. Any little secrets to point cutting you want to share with our viewers? So uh, always close your scissors, point, uh, leaving the scissors from your finger, so that way they don't have chance to cut yourself. And now I like to put a little deeper texture. So I comb it back a little bit so I can put it in my length and then bring my stuff straight in to the hair. So you take comb and then straight in. Again, guys, it's closing on the way out, so you're not pointing in and cutting your finger. I love that little subtlety, Cash, as you slide your hand up. Right, so I like to keep that base a little bit further. And then towards the end, I'm going to make it a little skinnier, almost a little more texture feel to it. Now, I would have to say over a thinning scissor, which could give you a similar result. Unlike a thinning scissor, you're kind of hitting three zones of the hair. So this first sort of base that can kind of alleviates it. Right, this is just like a base, a little deeper texture. And once you get through it, slice my finger a little bit, and it cut into again. So you get a little more random type of texture you will. Especially with Zoe's got quite a, a lot of fabric in there, so the space is really uh, critical to the particular hairstyle that we're going for. Right. If he doesn't have a texture in the hair, it's like a helmet almost. 
so it's keeping some kind of space in the hair. I think that's a common thread with all men's grooming guys. It's much more space. If all you're doing is creating clean lines, you're never going to get the type of texture styles that we're looking for today. So it's really critical that we start seeing space in all these designs to really make the hair work out. And especially when you're working shorter. You know, that makes a big difference the closer to the head you get? Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you get just heavy and stuff. So you have to get there and close to the head. Now we're working again with the diagonals from the top that you already connected in with stroking. Yes. So it's not just one area you're looking to loosen up this texture. Once, the, uh, once I complete the haircut, I'd actually go back in it. Worry about that heavy part. I want to take that heavy heaviness away. So always I like to go back to the cutting line whenever I cut before. And in the same way, I like to texturize. On the side too, same thing. All about that back a little bit that you take shots as well, and then just point through it. You can see the brilliant result of Zoe's highlight using the dual purpose bleach, three foils, great result, very Hawaii. Um, drop and three of just one trick question to Kashi Is this a men only trick technique? Can you use it anywhere? Yes, you can use it anywhere. You can use it for the girls or guys, doesn't matter, any age, doesn't matter to me. But based on the sort of relatively of the men's market, what a place to really hone that skill and then let that be a benefit to everything. So uh, it's not just a real gender sort of stuck position here. These type of skills can be used everywhere. They just lend themselves so well to today's kind of man that we're seeing coming through our salon bases. Love it. it almost looks like you're cutting your fingers. There's just no way you can believe it. I wish we could slow more it down to a week's worth just to watch it over and over again. Now, I'm going like to the detail a little bit. So once I create a uh, haircut, once I get a great shape, I like to do a little detail work. I always cut it from the other ear. Point, use my point of scissors. I don't want to put too clean line either. So I still want to put slightly extra in and two. I always like to use my uh, point of the scissors. Almost like a point cut, you know. How important is the detail for men's grooming today? It's just, uh, if you do the detail, the hair can last a little bit longer, like a week or two. So it's a little more low maintenance for the guys, too. And obviously, maintenance is a real factor. When you look at most of our men, they're business guys, uh, they, they maintain jobs, they wear suits on a regular basis. It's important that we go these necessary steps to really go to the furthest value of the service beyond just the haircut. In the back of the area too, I just want to point through it a little bit. And then I want to keep it kind of low volume too, so I'm going to put it, I'm going to put in my fist a little bit from the top of the head and then down to it. So stay kind of smaller for the nape area. Let me just clean up the length of the I two weeks to the guys. And now, the side bar idea, I like to make it a little bit tighter, so a little more cleaner, cleaner kind of feel to it, using the scissor solo form technique. A little tighter, a little cleaner. And turn them into that side area too. It's a nice little taper action. From the scissor over comb master, the first tea tree we made was all about this handmade version. Um, we love clippers, we also love scissors and this type of manicuring. Uh, the great thing that we can advise our audience right now is become a master of many of these techniques so that men can become as exciting in your salon as they are in ours. And I am um, finishing up with a product, uh, tea tree grooming pomade. And I'm going to mix with the gel as well, so that way I can create nice texture and nice shine to it. And I'm taking gel here too. No, I love this. This is a styling gel by Tea Tree. And the great thing, guys, professional products truly become professional when you and I as hairdressers touch them. This is something that Zoe can only receive in the hair salon. This is tailor-made for Zoe's hair. That's what separates us from drugstores and supermarkets. So now I'm finishing up the hair. And just putting everywhere, and then once you just want to put them on, and it just takes a little bit longer, so that way each hair has a product on it. 
just use my finger and then just moving along and then just replace the hair again with your finger and then just get everywhere and then finish up my hair cut. So Zoe's recommendation for take home his grooming needs are supplied by the tea tree grooming pomade, tea tree styling gel. Great results. <laughs> and I have worked together for 15 years at Paul Mitchell World and I, I just love his ability and his skill and he has something very unique to share with you. He's a master associate. He's part of the PAC team which is Platform Artist Club at Paul Mitchell. Please welcome Herman Cole. Thank you, Robert. Good to see you today. Great to be here. So what are you going to do on Adam here? Well, what we're going to do on Adam, first of all, we're going to look at his existing shape which I think is a little bit round for his facial uh, features. I think he's got a great jawline so I'm looking to really kind of like take him straight up with the clipper around the back matching the sides and leave me modeling through the top. And I'll be using my Oscars. Um, I'll be using the Oscar 76, which in my opinion is the Rolls Royce of Clippers. I also like using a nice flat comb, a very flat comb, very wide comb. So actually the surface in which it covers with the clipper applying to the comb is really minimal, so I don't really create any lines in the hair. So I think it's a really great technique, a nice wide comb. So the one thing you kind of said based on Adam's roundness, the one thing that men have in common, and almost all of them, look for much more geometry, much harder lines. No guy in the salon wants to hear wispy or soft. They want to hear more male-driven words. I think it's critical. I don't use any guards when I do my clipper cutting. I actually do interchangeable blades. Uh, so a lot of times people will say, well, why the blades versus the guard? I think the guard uh, is good, but I think the clipper and the attachments of different size blades gives a nice clean cut. And one thing, too, guys, one great thing about our business is the tools. The clients are going to love that you're interchanging blades and doing stuff like that because we're probably the only profession in the world that gets the coolest tools to play with. The one thing that we've really done technically, we've got scissors, we've got razor, we've got clippers, we've got a little bit of everything. Clients need to celebrate that with us because, you know, it's an exciting part of what we get to do. I must add to that, Robert, because I think it's really a key factor when I do change my tools a lot, whether I use shears, clippers, softening blades, whatever, changing the blade size, the client's always very intrigued because not everyone does that. So I think it adds more value to me as a stylist behind the chair as well as it gives more creativity and energy in the eyes of the client watching there. Well, Herman, we are honored to have your skill level on this beautiful tea tree collection. Let's get to hey, it. I'm so pleased to be here. Thank you. So what I've done here, I'm actually taking a horseshoe section from the recession plane across the back of the crown using my clippers, the ostrich set. And you can see that actually he has a lot of hair, so I'm just basically removing a lot of bulk at this time. Now, a couple of choices. You went for uh, the comb, the way you hold the comb. I mean, what's that got to do with it, Herman? Uh, I think the way I'm holding the comb just gives me the ability to actually comb there up and down to give me more control. So the clipper definitely one of the advantages is speed, yeah? Absolutely. I think it's uh, a great way to get through a haircut, but yet I think it's very effective and also very methodical as well, very step one, step two orientation. But I think it's a great way to get through a haircut uh, with a great end result. Now, primarily in the salon, this is what you do? Absolutely. I would say probably 70% of my business is clipper cutting. I would say I clipper cut all day long. That must make you a true, true expert, and that's what we love about this. Um, the, the clipper for me, especially in the sort of gratification that you see, everything sort of hit the head shape. I see so many hairstyles on men right now that are really quite tight, so this would be an ideal way to get there. Would you agree? Absolutely. I think the thing about the clipper, even though it is cutting a straight line, also using uh, the large tubes of the comb, it allows me also to get some texture in my design cut as well. So the large set of this, Takashi kind of taught us on scissor comb, gives you a lot more freedom. It's not so rigid in the locking system, uh, but the comb is critical. Uh, the clipper does run along the comb almost like a train on its track, uh, but it, the looseness of it is really going to contribute a lot to these looser sort of hairstyles. Absolutely. Cleaning up around the cyber area just a little bit. And Adam has so much hair, you're going to see that I'll be fine tuning and making everything a little bit tighter as I just kind of melt the sides in the back end of the top. Now, it seems like a large format. I mean, give me a little breakdown of sort of how you're working your way around the head. Pretty much what I like to do is actually start through the sides, uh, continue through the back, and then start from the other side, working back into the previous cut section that I completed at the back.
And you can see, I think the momentum or the range of motion needs to be completed so I really run out of hair as I continue with my guide. Like a laser. I think it's nice to have a nice sharp edge. Once again, cleaning up around the ear. Just lay that ear down, roll the ear forward, pick up behind the ear. And continue my range of motion. Here I'm actually kind of what I call painting the hair, removing some of that little flyaway hair, which is an excellent technique to use around the ear area. Just folding that ear forward, cleaning up that neckline. Arching around the ear, applying the trimmer on a 45 degree angle, so I'm kind of rounding out that corner so it gives a nice sharp line. And once again, the hair growing through the center back, drawing my line by applying my clipper trimmer upside down. Now we talked about when we started that roughing in the amount of hair that he had really made it impossible to get the right accuracy. So tell us a little bit what you're doing now. Basically, I'm just really tightening up the look. Actually, I want to go a little bit shorter around the ear, kind of tapering that down so I get that really a nice visual going straight at the head shape, as I mentioned in the earlier consultation. It's really kind of refining, more detailing, really taking the time and the patience to really go through it methodically. Uh, and really, I think this makes the biggest difference because it really takes a lot of the fatness at the bottom. And this is one of the things in men's lifestyle. They want longevity, so maybe they're coming every four weeks. But it's really important that it's not looking ugly in four weeks. It's still something we can get away with us with the certain tie type of crowd that we sometimes deal with. So when they're wearing hair this tight, they really are driven by the detail of it, and that's what makes us connoisseurs. So now I've actually switched my clipper using my number two blade just to kind of take away a little more length toward the bottom as I taper that neckline in. You'll see I'll be switching blades here a little bit, working with my number two blade, my one and a half blade, and then once again, anytime I do clipper over comb, as I'm doing right here, I always work with my number one blade, just tightening up that neckline. So just like the scissors sort of connoisseurs, you guys have a, uh, an array of blades. Uh, the connoisseurs of clippers also like to play different attachments and show different ways and mechanisms. Here again, I took that tire just sharpening up that neckline with my trimmer. You can see I'm drawing that rough drafted line because there actually grows toward the face, cleaning up that line. And then there at the bottom, you'll see me drawing that line up a little bit by placing that clipper on the skin and drawing the line up working with my number one blade once again because I'm going to be doing a little bit of edging at the very bottom there. Kind of doing a little circular motion there to kind of soften that corner out. So am I correct in assuming one's tight, two is a little bigger and looser, is that the way it works? Right. I pretty much say I would start with the largest blade first and then I work my way down. I think sometimes people have trouble uh, taking things too short, too high and have trouble blending the top. Uh, my theory is actually coming in with the larger size blade or attachment and then working down to the smaller size. Now some clippers have those kind of adjustable heads, so I guess you would just work the large ratio when you're at the two point right. and as tight as you can go. Uh, so that little maneuver sort of gidget can get you close to the same result, I guess. That's correct. Here again, just fine tuning that back neckline. He has a lot of hair, so it's a lot of bulk there, so I really want to blend that out really nicely creating that interior shape. Now we're working into the top. Just taking the section, combing it down, and as I find my clipper here, you'll notice I'm coming straight up the shape, but I'm slightly going to be directing slightly over the top of the head, just so I can like blend that corner way as it drops back down. So we'll, we'll probably be doing this in two or three sections, so we always want to make sure we go one past the center. Next section down. Notice my clipper is actually throwing the hair off of its face. So when you see me work the other side, you'll see me turn the clipper over so I can actually throw the hair off its face on the other side. So again, that service, degree of service. Who wants hairs all over their face? It's not a comfortable feeling. We hate it as hairdressers. Think of how a customer feels. Uh, one of the things we really try to do with Tea Tree Guys is show you all the way to build service to the highest level possible. And men are just great examples of guys that really want to enjoy uh, every single part of it. So you can see here I have a clip, a clip over, so I'm actually working from the front of the face to the back. So actually the hair is not going to be falling into the client's face, but just working off the face itself. What a great trick, Carmen. Uh, that's very, very valuable stuff. I think the little things make all the difference.
I think it does because obviously cutting with a clipper, it seems like a machine. Maybe there's no finesse involved, but there is. There's so much to what we sometimes refer to as the juge, the game of it. And I think it's really important that we understand as hairdressers that cutting hair well is one aspect of it, but the game that you play every day in the salon is really what takes you to the in-demand sort of level that we all want to be on. Now I'm just actually doing a fine cutting over comb, which is a really great technique to remove a lot of the bulk. And as you can see, Adam has a lot of hair there, and so I really want to really work that texture into the design so I get the really end result I'm looking for. Just working through the top, going back and forth, just releasing all that bulk. Well, it's much like watching Takashi. We're all impressed with what the scissors do, but really what I'm seeing here, Herman, is really the... The, the disciplined barber trained combing, you know, that you're really controlling and having a, a real sort of feeder, if you will. The comb's just the kind of dispenser of hair, and that's really what makes this really, really work. So the discipline you gain with using a, a clipper over comb really can benefit you in lots of other ways from what I can see. I think so, Robert. I think the idea of being able to use my shear and my comb as a tool to combine uh, with the idea I have in mind, such as lifting up, uh, point cutting in there, actually cutting on the angle, so I'm actually releasing some of the length, but yet providing that great texture that I'm looking for. And the great thing is it's a no cutty cutty. You're not going to cut your finger. Uh, yep. Your comb's kind of in there. And what I love is a, a coach of hairdressers, because your hand's not in the way, you're going to develop a whole different way of seeing hair. Uh, as hairdressers conditioned from beauty school, all we can imagine is hair exists between our fingers. Uh, it's really nice when you can kind of keep the main frame of what you're doing in, in your sort of viewpoint. So with not having your hands in the way, I think it's a big, big plus. Here again, just checking out that texture, see if I'm getting what I want to see in the front. Once again, I'm going to be using the tea tree styling gel, which is a great tool. Uh, I like the fact that it does give their incredible shine factor as well as texture. Working that through my hands really, really good. And actually, I'll be applying that through the shade by just kind of like running my fingers through there, using my fingers to comb, and then also actually using the flats of my hands also just to kind of flatten that hair out just a little bit. Almost like shoe shining. This is one of our top selling products, the tea tree styling gel. Uh, it has many, many ways it can be used, from the guy that really wants ultimate control all day long, uh, right down to this sort of uh, texturized look that Herman's kind of really completed in a masterful way. Um, it's really about mold and gold. Guys aren't going to fuss around so much with a blow dryer, so the tea tree styling gel is a good answer for his grooming needs. <laughs> My beautiful model, Silvio. He's from Italy. Ciao. He's gorgeous, and the great thing I love, he's got a bi-level story. One is he had limitations. As a hairdresser, I love limitations. So the one thing he's sort of expressed is a rule. He wanted to keep length. So what I'm going to add to it is a little what I call dirty rock and roll, kind of putting some texture using the palm Mitchell carving comb. The second tier to Silvio's story is really quite brilliant. We upgraded him. We used PM Shine's lunchtime color, and we used 4BV. And 20 minute application is a perfect upgrade tool and it applies especially to your male customers. That's what it's about. Dictated by Silvio's texture, it's quite fine in mechanism. Because of this, I'm going to use a much firmer sort of uh, technique to really make a much more visible intent. I call this look the Dirty Rock Star. It's about making it sort of keep this sort of lifestyle of length, but coming in with a much more dirty inside line that really picks up textures and the ideal for the grooming products that we choose. The one thing we want to kind of bring your attention to is this isolation up top. That's going to be protected to the end result and we're just going to work on a skirting mechanism that keeps the perimeter outline intact but still gives me the internal combustion that I'm looking for. Real simple but very, very effective. Let's begin. I think the most important part of Silvio's haircut begins on the front frame line. So I'm using the Paul Mitchell carving comb, just pulling hair straight out, and I'm actually going to etch in using a stone wash mechanism all the sort of perimeter feel all to the opposite side. By standing on one particular side, it helps me lean towards the asymmetry that I want to create in the front hairline. So this is a kind of good character, kind of a swoopy, almost beetle-esque bang, if you will. So it's just working almost like a pencil, letting the carving comb do all the real work. Starting on the inside, we're going to use a diagonal slot mechanism. Key point here, over-directing all the front hairline hair slightly back to that first section. 
using a skirting action, which means we go deep and start pulling away through the bottom so we can maintain the ideal length. Second section, we're still following the diagonal path line, working with the top of the head down into the nape. We're going to pick up a slight amount of the first cut section and begin to skirt again, working deeper towards the top, pulling away slightly with your hand so that the length has to travel to fit the cut connection. Next section, we just repeat the same process, diagonal down into the nape line, just working with the contour of the head. A good clean section gives you a nice blueprint. And lift it straight out from where the section begins, starting on the top, getting deeper. This creates a nice little short set of mechanism, which you'll see as we disconnect the top, and then skirting to protect that valuable length towards the bottom. We proceed again. We will continue using this method until we go one section past center, getting in shorter, and only releasing the hair as the comb allows. Let this razor comb actually work all the way through the section. Don't let your fingertips let go of the hair you're holding. That's the most valuable trick to using a carving comb. Nice soft fluid movements. It's really important that you use the edge of the blade all the way through. It's not a blunt scissor. So by using the finesse of it, it's almost like an emery board. You want to finesse that hair, and that gives it the stonewashed sort of rugged edge that I want out of this particular look. As we get towards the perimeter length, we lift far away. That maintains and carries and continues the length all the way through. Second sight. A little different body position here, but make sure that you're constantly pulling back on the hairline hair to protect the sort of fringy outline that we want to maintain. Falling through the same diagonal slot. So I think it's really important when we're working with men that we really get them excited about the sort of tools that we make. Um, men are going to love the, the sort of possibility of having a haircut with a razor. It's not the norm. So, you know, show off your tools and toys. Uh, they're going to be just as intrigued as we are, even though we're in the profession. They love to have unique things done to their hair. When we talk to the guys, I think it's important that we talk in a different way. Let's make some tailor-made recommendations for the grooming needs that they need here. We're following through in the same rhythmic pattern. Our goal here is to cross and eclipse the opposite side that's already cut. So still keeping the same pattern and blueprint that we've used on the opposite side, pulling away from the bottom to maintain maximum length. Slight downward elevation. This is really dictated by his particular texture. Look at the bottom already. Beautiful little sort of dirty, skirty rocking roller. Now we're going to create that same sort of internal combustion. Uh, we're going to stay with the palmetto carving comb and take everything from the indentation line, so that's the kind of high point of the head, division point of the ear, and then keeping the same character that we did in the front side panels. I'm going to over direct all the front hairline hair back to that indentation line. So there's a lot of drag there. That's just going to be in protection. Protection is very, very good idea when we're cutting hair in this particular manner. I take the carving comb right over the top, and what that really does is just follows my finger line, just like it does every day when you cut with scissors. Connect it through, and then just crack it across the top. Uh, the great thing about the design of the Paul Mitchell carving comb is it's not going to cut yourself, so it's a very safe way and safe method to cut hair with, and yet quite rewarding. It almost looks like point cutting all in one. Great thing about this, a real vivid design line that's really key characteristic of good razor cutting. And don't let some of the little details, those little wispy hairs, drive you nuts. Sometimes that's the characters and the texture that make it quite exciting. Remember the outcome here, dirty rock and roll. It's prim but not proper. We're not looking for an exact science. That's why we chose the carving comb. Falling through the same blueprint all the way through going from the center and then side to side and just connecting off the top line into the corner from the inside line. And you can see it. Make a little road with your fingers, lock it, and both sides of the carving comb are actually cutting. And the key character here, a little trick for home use, make sure you lock your fingers tight. The more tension, the more agility you're going to have to cut the hair. 
Um, also notice the sort of conditioning of it. It's kind of damp to dry, not soaking wet, so that makes a very big difference in the outcome. Uh, we're finding as a company we're cutting hair drier, uh, much more damp, so we can really get, get in contact with the visual existence of what's actually happening in the haircut beyond just the technique that you chose. So we're now connecting that loose end back to the very top back end. Same principle, this time we're working on more of the diagonal, kind of connecting to that rooftop sort of prism we cut. And now just breaking into pie shaped sections and following all the way around the head until we hit the indentation line. Because of the way we use the carving comb, you get a much more sort of uh, serrated edge, unlike a scissor that would give you a much more clumpier sort of line especially on very fine visible hair. It's very easy to get scissor lines. So this is an ideal thing when there's danger. Very, very blonde hair would be a great way to use this particular technique because it tends to show a little more of those accurate scissor lines. This is a great way to texturize and cut all in one episode. Side two, just ditto, doing the exact same thing, working from pie-shaped sections. You're connecting that short base in through the top area. So. Primarily, uh, the shortness here should sort of match, but I will say that something's a little shorter in this end can really stretch the shape out, so it's got a little variable to it. Here we are after the retreat experience, taking Silvio back to the sink to go through with the removing of the little hairs, a final little neck massage, and using the hot towels. My product of choice for his grooming take home is Tea Tree Hair and Body Moisturizer. Because of these fine fabric, it doesn't lend itself to really have a lot of absorbency. So what I've chose to do is use a conditioner for a real sort of soft feel touch, and then follow in actually using the grooming pomade with tea tree in mind. So the kind of look is intentionally soft, not real man-made. Looking for something that kind of almost looks a little bit of slept in, if you will, just not so prim and proper. Uh, I think it's really important that a guy's hair looks a little distraught and not so perfect like mom combed it. At least my mom did. So here's the grooming pomade, beautiful consistency, it's got a great kind of old time barber feel which I love. Working it through and now I'm just going to kind of get the dimension and texture. This hair is looking amazing, the look is just incredible. A couple of things it takes us as professionals to get there. Uh, we used PM Shines, brand new color from Paul Mitchell with a 3BV diluted with clear shines, tea tree hair and body moisturizer and finished off with a tea tree grooming pomade. Sylvia, you look amazing.